Hey there, happy people. I'm Robert Arrington, and this is Deer Meat for Dinner. This is not a typical video for my channel. First off, I wanna say my heartfelt, most sincere condolences to the entire Bush family. Mr. Bush was an amazing man who lived an amazing life and left an amazing legacy. My older brother, Albury, and his wife, Jenny, went to Texas A&M. Albury got his PhD studying ecology. Jenny got her master's studying nutrition and immunology. So this is Jenny. She's married to my brother, Albury, and she's gonna tell you the story of how she met President Bush. December was coming, Lauren was due. We were hoping the 1st of January because she would have been one, one, one. And I marched across the stage eight and a half months pregnant with my belly leading the way. And because all you pregnant women out there know, you don't have a long period of time between bathroom breaks. And I marched right across the stage, got my diploma and marched right outside. However, I started having all these false alarms. And even though the book said you could have false alarms, they felt like the real deal. So for three weeks before she was actually born, every day felt like today's the day. I thought she was gonna be born on Christmas Eve. I thought we were gonna have a New, Year, um, New Year's baby. But time kept passing. And around about January 9th or 10th, I was getting exceedingly bored. I had read what I wanted to read. There was only so much I could do to get ready for a baby I'd never had. I had no idea what to expect, even though I had read all the stuff, because you really don't know, do you, until you have that first child. I had exercised the whole time at the Texas A&M Rec Center, a beautiful facility. I swam right up until my due date, and I remember putting the bathing suit on and thinking, oh my goodness, it's gonna split right down the middle. Um, people would stop me and ask me if I was having twins in their nice, sweet Texas accent. I didn't feel so sweet answering them because there was just one baby in there, but I was big. So that day, January 11th, I was sitting at home, still no baby. Here I thought we were gonna have a Christmas Eve baby, a New Year's Eve baby, a New Year's Day baby, and now she was overdue. So I thought I'll just go in the rec center, get on one of the exercise bikes, set the timer for about 20 minutes, and ride until the pain stops me. And it was chilly out, and I walked inside the rec center, and I looked up, and I saw a bit of a commotion, and I saw a tall, regal-looking man standing in dress pants and tennis shoes. And my first thought was, wow, that man wears exercise clothes like my dad does. And I wondered who he was, because I couldn't see his face, and then I saw two very important men in suits standing next to him and I knew right then that it was President Bush. I was so excited, and I wasn't gonna go up to him and say hello, and then I could hear my husband's voice in my head, if you don't take the opportunity while you have it, then you lose out. So I doubled back, and I turned around, and I walked up to him, and I said, sir, can I please shake your hand? And he reached his hand out, and he said, when's the baby due? and started telling me pregnancy stories about Barbara Bush, and I was just flabbergasted. I thought, I just thought he would shake my hand and that would be it. But we made small talk, and then I turned, because other people had come up. I went and I sat on an exercise bike, and no one else was there, and he came and sat on the exercise. I really can't remember how it landed up, frankly, but we landed up on side-by-side -side exercise bikes. And, you know, I didn't have, there were no Apple Watches. I don't know what my heart rate was, but I know it shot up. And I had already started riding, so I guess that means he came up afterwards. But anyway, I remember thinking to myself, the President of the United States is riding on an exercise bike next to you. Stay calm and talk like a normal person. So I looked over and smiled and we started talking but it wasn't difficult at all. It wasn't even awkward because he was so genuinely interested in me and he looked at me and he said, so why, what are you and your husband doing here? 
And so I started telling him, I told him about my research, I told him I had recently graduated, that after maternity leave I was going to go back and get to work in the same lab I had graduated from. And then I told him about Aubrey's research, because Aubrey and I had been in Venezuela on the Rio Sinaruco. As soon as I said the Rio Sinaruco, he knew right where that was. He didn't have to be, now where is that again? He knew right where it was and he knew what it's known for, peacock bass. He, he said, oh yes, I've been fishing there for peacock bass, right? So we talked about the Rio Sinaruco, we talked about peacock bass. In the middle of it all, random people would pop up on the TV screens and he had personal anecdotes about whoever would pop up. Oh, there's so-and-so. Him and his wife came to the White House. Well, it's such a shame they got, they separated. They were such a nice couple. They went to church with us once. It was just, I was flabbergasted. And I would say to myself, don't hyperventilate. Just be normal. Let's keep talking. I remember when I left that day, how incredibly amazed I was that somebody of his importance, of his caliber, could have taken the time to be so interested in me. So I thought, you know what? This is an incredible memory. This was an incredible moment and it was a gift to me. I was so down in the dumps and there because I was overdue and had gone to the gym, I got to meet him. So I thought, I'm just gonna keep it to myself. I've told the most people I wanna tell and I'm just gonna keep it to myself and enjoy that memory. Aubrey's mom and dad, Betty and Walt, came to visit us in Texas to see their first grandchild. And of course I told them the story. Well, Betty looked at me and said, you need to send him a birth announcement and a picture. And I said, why would I do that? He would never write me back. And Betty said, no, I bet you George Bush would write you back. That's the type of person he is. And I thought about it one day and I thought, you know what? I got nothing to lose. It's just a stamp and I sent him a letter, reminded him of when I met him, sent him a picture of Lauren who was a few months old by then. And I don't remember how much time passed, but in the meantime, 9-11 happened. And that day, we all know what we were doing on that terrible day. And it was, uh, a few weeks later, I got a response. And he had written the letter on September 24th, 2001. Dear Lauren Marissa, your lovely mother wrote me recently telling me that you came into this world on January 14th, 2001. I met your mom three days before you were born and someday I hope I get to meet you. Mrs. Bush and I simply want to say welcome. Already, you are a lucky little girl, luckier than most for you have a mother and a dad and a wonderful extended family who love you so much. Love counts a lot and you will grow up with lots of affection in your life. I was the 41st president of the United States. Now, I am just a happy 77 year old man who loves his friends, who loves life. I hope your life will be as happy as mine has been, Lauren, and I further hope that you will live it in a world at peace. All the best to you, Lauren Marissa. Sincerely, George Bush. What's really cool about this letter is that 15 days after 9-11, and old George H.W. Bush had the time and thought to sit down and write to a newborn baby about the joy of living and about the hope for peace. I think that's awesome because it is truly a testament to his character and to the legacy that he leaves behind. Despite never being able to meet him, this letter is proof that he cared about the young people of our nation and that he cares for the future generation. And knowing that, it is with this that I pursue, you know, I'm a senior in high school and going to college next year, hopefully. And it's with that, with people like this, important people who are willing to pour into our generation, that's one of the things that makes our nation so great. And so as they pass a baton to us, it's my generation's job to grab that baton and to keep running, to push through as we begin our lives in the real world and seek to fulfill his mission and bring a world at peace. Lauren, that was amazing. And everybody watching, I want you to know, none of this was scripted. I literally showed up to their home, Ginny played beautiful hymns on the piano, and told her story. Lauren came home from school and I just said, read this and tell me what you think. 
and that's what she said. So everybody, everybody that's a part of the Bush family, everybody who watched this video, I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate you being a part of my life, a part of my channel, and a part of what we do. President Bush was an amazing man, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. This wasn't a political post. This was a post about life. I can only hope that I live a life where I touch as many lives as he did. Everybody, I hope you have a great night. Tell someone you love them. Take care, God bless, and I'm gone.